Welcome back everybody and you're watching Bitcoiner Talk. In today's video I'll show you how to set up your own Bitcoin node. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 5 and I'll also be using Bitcoin Nuts. Not Bitcoin Core because of the drama that has been happening recently. I'll go with Bitcoin Nuts. So I'll show you everything that you need in this video and let's get started. So firstly the most important part is you will need your own Raspberry Pi. I have mine in a case since I was already running a Bitcoin node previously, but if you don't have a case, don't worry about it. As long as you have your own Raspberry Pi, that's the most important part. Also, I'll have everything linked in the description for everything that is required in this video. But as you can see, my Raspberry Pi is in a custom case. Well, not really custom, you can get those on Amazon. You don't have to have a case, but I prefer to have a case. Then you will also need an original Raspberry Pi adapter to plug into the wall. You will also need a Ethernet cable. It is required to have a two terabyte uh, hard drive or SSD. It's uh, preferably to have an SSD, but currently I only have a hard drive. It is not the best practice to have an older hard drive. As long as you have two terabytes, that is reasonable but if you're doing your own node maybe just don't cheap out and get a ssd you see i went out and cheaped out and got a hard drive i haven't had any problems yet but just in case and then you will need an sd card preferably more than 32 gigabytes i think mine is yeah mine's 32 gigabytes and you will need an adapter well i'll be using a mac so i'll need an adapter to plug in and flash this um a sd card to an os and i forgot to also mention i'll be using umbrel for this tutorial so that's a bit late but yeah i'll be using umbrel for this tutorial so let's jump back onto the computer and flash this os onto the sd card so firstly what you'll need to do is get yourself a program called balena etcher i'm probably butchering it but you'll have to get this program to flash the OS onto your SD card. So what you'll need to do next is go on GitHub and find yourself uh, the install for Umbrella OS itself. I'll leave everything in the description and if not, then I'll leave it in a pinned comment. And you will just have to find, yeah, installing Umbrella OS on micro SD card. So it says warning installing, uh, uh, umbrella os on the micro sd card is not recommended it is not recommended you can read more about it on the actual github uh, but i'm still going to use an sd card and yeah i have everything downloaded already so i'll just jump and plug my adapter in you see give me boot a boot b and config i already have stuff on this sd card but i'm gonna wipe everything and just reinstall the os from fresh so flash from file and then I go on my desktop and then umbrella OS for Pi 5 open and then select target my target is this USB storage select and then flash this shouldn't take too long and I'll get back to use whenever this is finished so as you can see my flash has completed it's been successful and now my OS is flashed onto this SD card. So my next step would be is to get my Pi and put in my SD card into the holder. Well, you see, if, if I didn't have my case on, it would be much easier. But now since I have the case on, it's a bit more complicated. There you go. And it's just fitted in the back. That's what the Pi's have. If you're using a different device, it might be different. But yeah, now my Umbrella OS is in my Pi 5. All I'll have to do now is connect it to the power source, connect to the Ethernet cable and show you what the next step is. So let's get to it. So I've plugged in my Raspberry Pi and it's up and running. And the next step you'll have to do is go on your browser. Doesn't matter what browser you're using, you can do it on your phone as long as it's connected under the same network. And you'll have to go in and write umbrella.local. Local. And that's pretty much what you'll have to do is press click and you see it says welcome back enter your umbrella password i have already had an umbrella set up 
on my local network. I've already been using Umbrella, I've been using my Raspberry Pi, I've been using my Bitcoin node, but for your first step, you'll have the same screen. It just wouldn't say welcome back. It will just basically say, let's set you up. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna log in and show you how to set up your node. So as you see, install your first apps. This is exactly what you'll be seeing on your first time. And basically you can press install your Bitcoin node here, but that means you'll be running Bitcoin Core. And we don't wanna run Bitcoin Core. We wanna uh, run Bitcoin Nux. So let's go explore more. And you can see there's a lot of different things you can install it's not only for running your own bitcoin node you can do so much more with having a uh, raspberry pi running as your home server uh, you can do uh, you can do so many things and you can have few of them raspberry pis running you can have a big setup it doesn't matter but we're gonna just focus on the bitcoin uh nox part so let's go on the search bar and write bitcoin uh Nox, 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 There you go. The first one, run your personal Bitcoin node. So there you go. And this is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna press install. So Bitcoin Nox has been installed on my umbrella. I'll press open and a different pop-up will open a different window. And there you go. It's still synchronizing and it will take a while to synchronize. So I'm just gonna leave it off. You can, you can turn off your browser, you can, uh, turn off your computer it does not matter as long as your uh, raspberry pi is connected to uh to the wall and it's connected to the internet you do not have to worry about your computer being connected because it does not rely on the computer i'm using a computer just to connect to my raspberry pi and do everything from this device and um, this is pretty much it i'll get back to you when the node has synchronized when the blocks have been added and I'll probably see you in a week time. So as you can see, I've turned my camera off and my blocks started to come in. So you can see blocks from 16 years ago, the very first block. I have 4,000 blocks already in my hard drive and I need nearly 900,000 blocks. So I'll just be waiting patiently and seeing when this is finished. And just to show you, this is my node. Looks very pretty and yeah. Now it's just adding all the Bitcoin blocks. So it's been a couple of hours, so I decided to have a little checkup and also tell you how to battle with the uh, Bitcoin spam that has been going on and the whole talks about why people choose to use Bitcoin nuts and not Bitcoin core. So um, we're nearly 6% in uh, on synchronizing the whole uh, blockchain and you don't have to, as I mentioned, don't have to connect anything just of now, but I'll show you how to battle with this pump. And it'll be a quick setting over here. Be, changing, be careful when you're changing uh, any settings, but uh, we know what we're changing. So optimize and then you scroll at the bottom where it says uh, relay transactions with embedded uh, data. So we just want to turn this off and then save and restart Bitcoin node. So that will just restart my Bitcoin node that is running on uh, my um, Raspberry Pi. So that will just take a little minute and then we'll continue back to uh, synchronizing. And there you go. We'll continue synchronizing and get back to you when this is completely finished. It's been just under a month since I started running my Bitcoin node. And I have to say, it's still not fully synced. And it's all because I took rookie mistakes. Instead of using an SSD, I used a hard drive. I used a Raspberry Pi, even though Raspberry Pis could technically run a Bitcoin node. The main problem, in my opinion, was that I was using a hard drive. Uh, two terabyte hard drive, doesn't matter what size it is, it was an SSD, so it couldn't store and it couldn't sync the blockchain as quick as I wanted. And it being nearly a month, uh, as you can see, I've only synced 97%, well, technically 98% uh, of the blockchain is synced on my node. And through doing this tutorial, I've learned where I've made my mistakes and I've learned what to do next time. And I could have scrapped this video of not upload it and not tell anybody that I made a mistake and waited this whole time and uh, still not fully synced. 
but no i rather still upload this video and show that yes it is possible to run a bitcoin node with a hard drive and a raspberry pi but you'll be waiting a long time like in my case the, i've been waiting just under a month and it's still not fully synced and even after it is 100 percent synced every 10 minutes a new block comes approximately 10 minutes a new block comes around i might still have difficulties on keeping up because of my equipment that i'm using and i will also be making another video on how to set up a bitcoin node but this time I won't be using a Raspberry Pi and I won't be using a hard drive. I've learned my mistakes from this video and I will improve on my next video. But as I said, I still think it's educational to upload this video and show you that with any hardware you can run a Bitcoin node, but it is just not going to be as smooth as you would like. So if you liked watching this video and if you learned from my mistake, I hope you did. Uh, but as I said, if you do not have those requirements and you don't want to be spending out, still try your best. Spin up a Bitcoin node, just let it run, let it do its thing and be a part of this network. I'm still going to let this synchronize 100% when I'm going to build my new node. I don't know if I'm going to keep both of them, if I'm going to only keep one. We'll see what the future holds for us. But as I said, I hope you learned from my mistakes and I'll see you in the next video. This was Bitcoiner Talk.